Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Wednesday, January 11th, 2023, and I'm Caroline Bailey, a Professional Development Coordinator for the Developmental Disabilities Administration. We welcome you to the Maryland Community Practice for Supporting Families webinar series. Our topic today is the University of Maryland's Terp Succeed program. This session is being facilitated by Marianne Kane Brushy, Parent and Director of Family Supports for DDA. Her guests include Amy Dwyer Degatti, the Director of the Terp Succeed program. Hari Cannon, a student and Terp Succeed participant. Amira Daisy, a student and Terp Succeed peer mentor. Before we begin, I'd like to go over a few things about the webinar. All participants will be in listen only mode. There are two options for listening to the webinar by computer and by phone. If you're having trouble hearing, you can try switching the audio by clicking the appropriate button on the webinar panel. There are handouts for this webinar and you can find them in the handout section of the panel to the right of your screen. They can also be emailed if you're listening by phone. We will be recording the webinar, and we'd like to hear feedback from you on today's presentation and any suggestions you might have for future topics. So please use the question or chat box to the right in the webinar panel to provide that. And if you have any questions related to your family member services, please contact your local regional office. There is one last thing before we move on. We're going to ask you to participate in a few polls and a couple more later on during the presentation. So we're gonna launch our first poll. So our first poll is, where do you live? And it, the options are Central Region, Eastern Region, Southern Region, and Western Region. Okay, so we'll give about another 10 seconds for people to respond. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and share the results. So we had 40% of people say they're from the central region, 13% say they're from the eastern region, 33 said the southern region, and 13% said the Western region. I'm gonna go ahead and share our next poll. Our next poll is what is your relationship to disability? The options are person with a developmental disability, family member, coordinator of community services, DDA provider, or other. Okay, we're gonna give about another 10 seconds for people to answer. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and share the responses. So we had 2% of people respond person with a developmental disability, 38% responded family member, 11 responded coordinator of community services, 23% uh, responded DDA provider, 26% responded as other. And so we're gonna do our third poll. Our third poll today is, are you or the person you support receiving services through DDA? And our options are yes, no, and I'm not sure. I'll give about another 10 seconds for people to respond. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll and share the results. So we had 74% of people say yes, 25% said no, and 1% said I'm not sure. Well, thank you for participating in our polls. And now I'd like to introduce Marianne Cambrushy. Good afternoon, Marianne. Good afternoon, Caroline. Thank you. 
Um, just, uh, I'm not seeing your screen. I'm just seeing the, there we go. There we go. All right, terrific. Thank you, thank you. All righty. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Maryland Community of Practice for Supporting Families, welcome to our webinar series and to our presentation today on the University of Maryland's TERPS Exceed program. The purpose of our webinar series is to bring individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities, families, and others together to connect and share information and ideas all in an effort to support one another as we move through everyday life. Throughout this series, we discuss a variety of topics and concerns individuals and families face related to everyday life. And we do this with our invited guests, sometimes our subject matter experts, and always through the lens of charting the life course. Next slide, please. For those of you who aren't familiar with charting the life course, it is a set of universal principles and tools. Its fundamental principle states that all people have the right to live, the right to live, love, learn, work, and play, and pursue their aspirations in com in the community. It was developed out of the University of Missouri, Kansas City's Institute for Human Development Family to Family Program to help. It was it was designed by individuals with disabilities and their families to help others, um, other folks with developmental disabilities and families create first begin to identify and create a vision for their good life. Think about what they're going to need to know and do, what how learn how to navigate and or develop supports and resources um, that will support them in um, creating and obtaining and living their good life and just in general truly discover what it's going to take to live the lives of their choosing and do it at the core at the core of charting the life course we view the person within the context of family however family might be defined for that that individual um, so we see the person as a person within the family and the community keeping this in mind our goal is to support the person to achieve his or her, to achieve self-determination, interdependence, productivity, integration, and belonging in all facets of community life, regardless of what, regardless of the life stage they might be in. They might be in elementary school, high school, you may have just transitioned, adult life, working, retiring, whatever that might be, our goal is to support the individual to truly live a meaningful life. And always, we recognizing that families are often the backbone of the service delivery system. They're there supporting their family member with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Our goal is to support families in such a way that we expand their capacity to do that, to do to to do that, recognizing their strengths, unique abilities, to best nurture, love, and support their family member. Next, next slide, please. One of the um, principles, so there are a number of principles and tools um, for today, just briefly, the, I just would like to draw attention to the trajectory. For me, th so this is both a principle and a tool within charting the life course. For me, this is where it all begins. It speaks to the vision. What is the vision you have for your, your own life, for your family member's life? What are you going to need to make that happen? This particular tool, is incredibly useful because it helps you to begin to have conversations, begin to identify, and maybe even really describe that vision. It also helps you to identify what you don't want. And sometimes it's easier for us to be able to say what I don't want, because the truth is sometimes you might not know what you want. But also, in addition, this helps you to identify like past experiences that you've had that really have always supported you for, to feel your best, to do your best and to support whatever it is that you really want to do in your life. Um, it also helps you identify those things that don't work, you know, and because they don't work, they shouldn't be a part of your life. We have um, included in the handout section, a trajectory for you. Um, it's a fillable form. I'm just hoping that you will, um, whether you download it or not, just take the time to, to look at it, to think about it, and, and hopefully it will ignite some great conversation um, um, with for you and your family member about what 
they may or may not want to do. And so with that, and 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 why this? Well, today we're gonna ha we we have quite a presentation for you, and um, I'm just so excited about what you're going to hear from Amy and Harry, and as well as Amira. Um, it to me it just raises the bar of expectations for what we might want for our our family members with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It, these kinds of opportunities have not always been available, um, but here we are. And the other plug I'd like to, to uh, make as well is that not only are we gonna hear about this program and we're gonna hear about the great things that Harry is doing, but we're also going to hear, so this is, I'm, I'm really speaking to families now because this is a tough one, being able to trust others, um, being able to trust this world that it's good and and there are folks that really want to support us and support our family members you're going to hear from Amira um, a, a peer mentor um, who again just represents so many people who really want to support and help to create a world that that that's better for all of us so with that without further ado let's let me introduce our guest next slide please so first, I'd like to introduce, and then Amy, I'm going to ask you to, to just wave your hand. Amy uh, Dwyer Agati, um, who is the director of TERPS, the TERP Succeed program at the University of Maryland College Park. And then Harry, would you raise your, there you go, there's Harry, who is a student within the TERP Succeed program. And then we have Amira, who is a peer mentor with the, tier, the TERP Succeed program. Welcome and thank you for being here today. And with that, I'm gonna hand it over to Amy. Just take it away. Okay, um, thanks and welcome everybody. Uh, we just wanna do a, a, a quick sort of overview of all the different components of TERP Succeed. We are relatively new. We have completed our third semester. Um, so, uh, which is very exciting and moving on to um, Hari's final semester as he is a senior this year. Uh, so uh, we'd love to open with just a video that we put together that shows sort of the big picture of the program. Um, so if that works, that will be sort of our intro.
Okay, so that gave a great overview of our program. Um, thanks, Hari, you were a star of that of that video. <laughs> um, so let me do a little description of what is TERP Succeed. Um, it is a two-year certificate program uh, right at University of Maryland in College Park. It is for students with intellectual disabilities who would not be able to apply and attend University of Maryland through a traditional pathway. Um, it is a non-degree program. It culminates in a University of Maryland certificate that comes out of our Office of Extended Studies, and that includes a transcript of all of the students' academic coursework. Um, they are allowed to audit and pass fail in addition to taking for regular credit, which is part of each student's individual plan. Um, and the coursework, the course of study, is aligned with the student's career interests. Um, and Harry will be able to talk about that later, about what his interests are and some of the courses that he's taken um, to match that. Uh, ultimately, the goal is that students get a better job than if they didn't go to college, which is the reason anybody goes to college. Um, the students participate in career development activities. They have work experiences, internships, and eventually paid jobs. And the goal is that they, they, you know, they graduate and into a job that's related to their career interest. Um, so next slide. We are um, uh, small but mighty at this point. So this is this is the staffing that we have had um, to launch. So I am the director. I have a coordinator, um, Dr. Lee, who spoke in the um, video. She is the uh, professor who teaches the course on peer mentoring and certification. So we'll talk a little bit about that, uh, that course. Um, there is a representative from the Career Center because the students do take a course in the Career Center and we're very connected uh, to the Career Center in terms of internships uh, and getting ready for internships and interviewing. Uh, we have a grad assistant that works with us each semester, so that often changes. And then Adrian, as well as our peer advocate, you met him as well in the video, and he attended a similar program at George Mason University. So he is a graduate of a post-secondary program that's similar to Trip Succeed, which is just a, a great, um, is a great wealth of knowledge, both for the peer mentors and for the Trip Succeed students as they're going through the program. So um, next slide, please. A little bit of the history of Terp Succeed is that there was clearly a gap of service in Maryland for students who, had, with intellectual disabilities who exited their high school and then wanted to go on to college. There are a roughly 300 similar programs, all varying various levels of, of inclusion and impact, but uh, across the country, there were none in Maryland. So students could go to Delaware, Pennsylvania, um, New Jersey, Virginia, and it's expensive uh, and out of state. So it was just time. And, you know, we were hearing from families that we needed to have a local option. And I agreed 100%. I've been working with these programs across the country for years. And so when I got to the University of Maryland, I said, this is this is a place that can, that can create the model for Maryland. And ultimately our goal is that a, these programs will be in a number of universities across the whole state of Maryland, because everyone should have a choice of, of where they'd like to attend college. So we capitalized on sort of the momentum of diversity, equity, and inclusion, which was a big push at the University of Maryland in the last couple of years. Um, but it's often not as strong in the area of disability. And our dean in the College of Education agreed that this was a great way to bring, to really highlight disability within that diversity movement. Um, and so she gave us the go ahead to start pursuing, you know, funding and options. She is now the provost of the university. So that was lucky for us as well. <laughs> um, so we pursued some financial support. We got some, uh, some seed money from the Maryland DD Council, which was great that let us get started. And DDA, Developmental Disability Administration has been funding, offer, offering funding ever since then to keep us going, which has been really fabulous. Um, and we have a couple of big donors who graduated from the College of Education and really uh, have been working in the field and saw this as a need. So this is what they, they are supporting now in their um, alumni funding. Uh, we got campus buy-in. You, you saw right there is a picture of President Pines with Hari. Um, so he knows fully about the program. He has you know met students. He tweets about us all the time. 
So the president is aware, and like I said, the, the um, senior vice president and provost was the, the dean in the College of Education that gave us a go ahead to get started. So we just were persistent. We went through, you know, meet with every department we can on campus. Um, and as soon as, you know, the top folks said, yeah, we want to do this, everybody says, well, of course we do. So um, that's been great. So next slide. So who is TERP Succeed for? We are looking for students. These are students who would benefit the most from the programming, um, ages 18 to 26 at the start of the program with an intellectual disability. Students who are willing to and capable of attending and completing um, University of Maryland academic coursework, um, even at the audit level, because for the certificate, if auditing, still have to take every test, do every assignment, they may be modified, but going to class, it's an academic program. So that's something, and again, college isn't for any everybody, um, even if you have a disability or not. So this is for people who wanna continue, you know, studying and learning new things because it is, it is academic. We're looking for folks who've had some work experience because this is a career focused program. Um, folks who've had some experience or show the ability for independent living, all of our students live on campus in dorms. Um, so being able to manage your time and your activities. Now we have lots of you know, peer mentors, which we will talk about and support from staff, but it is not 24 seven support. So, so students set their alarms, get up in the morning, they know their schedule, they've used their, their maps. We've worked with them on, on getting around um, and planning. And we have peer mentors who support their planning all their homework for the week and how they have to do that. But there is time when they are on their own managing this using the support structures we have set up. Um, students have access to know how to use a cell phone to communicate because a college student cannot exist without that. I mean, they use that for classes. They have group um, chats for group projects within classes. Um, so being able to, to use the maps and use all the communication systems on, on a cell phone is really key. It has to be somebody who wants to attend a large university or a Big Ten university about 40,000 students. It's relatively urban. Um, it's a pretty compact campus, They're, you know, um, but it is big and needs to be students who, who are gonna be appropriate on a college campus, just like anybody else who enrolls um, as a student. So they're held to the same student code of conduct um, as anyone else. Uh, we're looking for folks who are, you know, enjoy engaging in social activities and interested in joining student organizations. There are 750 clubs on campus, there is somebody, something for everybody. And a lot of our students are in more than one activity. So um, it really it allows you to engage in the community of the University of Maryland at College Park. And so that's, you know, we want people to be able to take advantage of that. And then there's other additional eligibility criteria that are that is listed in the top of the application that's on our website. So um, next slide, please. Here's our big focus areas. So I mentioned it's it's all about career exploration, career development. We are connected to the um, Career Center. And again, that goal is that they're gonna be able to get a, a better job based on stuff that they have studied and the experiences that they've had and their internships than if they didn't go to college. Uh, the other thing is the you know college success. They have course access. Students are taking undergraduate courses. Um, we create a course of study based on the offerings, and it's a big university. There's a ton of very cool classes. Harry will explain some of them that are, he's taken some very cool classes. <laughs> um, and so, you know, being able to access those classes and, and be like any other college students and, you know, be mem members of team projects within those courses, et cetera. And then um, the whole campus inclusion we have a very, very robust peer mentoring program that I'll talk about that has different levels of, of training and access. And really it's the key to making it inclusive because you know you don't want to walk around with me or have me go to class with you because as the students have said, I do give off a mom vibe. Nobody wants that in college and that's fair. <laughs> so we do other supports. We run independent study, background stuff, but really being a part of the, the student community is, you know, you don't want me around. So the peer mentors are really, and I don't know, and I don't know, I'm not a student at the University of Maryland. I don't have the, the insight, I, I can't maneuver that. So that's where we rely on all of our great peer mentors. Um, so the next slide, please. 
our components, two-year certificates, um, enroll through the Office of Extended Studies, which is the department that, um, that just houses all of the non-traditional uh, academic programming. Each semester, the students audit typical undergraduate um, studies courses, um, at least six credits, some do a little more. Um, there's an internship course that the students take every semester. It's repeatable up to 12 credits. It starts in the fall with the, the course on doing a lot of the assessment, practice developing your resume, um, going to career fairs and um, doing mock interviews and then starting your interview process for internships. And, uh, and then every semester after that is students taking various internships. They register for um, what we call ADS, Accessibility and Disability Services. So all of your accommodations, whether it's extended time on tests, a different testing location, note takers is all registered the same way any other student with a disability on campus gets their accommodations. They do work-based learning experiences, internships, jobs each semester after that first fall semester. Access to all clubs and activities. They have a student ID that gets them into everywhere. Uh, there's the option for on-campus housing and dining, which all six students, current six students, um, do that. There is the big peer mentoring program we're about to touch on. Uh, they have access to the typical orientation that occurs during the summer, all the facilities, sports lotteries, because it's Big Ten school. They have to go into a lottery, get their tickets to big football games and basketball games, and they all um, access that. And we are in the process, and it will hopefully be approved before the beginning of the next cohort that we uh, will be a comprehensive transition program, which is recognized by the Higher Ed Act. And um, then students will have access to apply for financial aid as well. So that's, that's the status that we are going for for the beginning of the fall. So um, next slide, please. Uh, career exploration and development, like I said, we partner with the Career Center. They have an employability program and they have programming specific for all students with disabilities on campus as well through the Career Center. They take a three credit course on career development. It is all focused on skill building. They do career exploration. They practice their inter informational interviews. And then the goal from there, as I said, is internships. Um, we've been doing all on-campus internships, certainly open to off-campus internships as well it is uh, directed you know, by the individual. Um, we, starting this next semester, we will have an additional employment specialist that is funded by Door, Maryland Doors, Voc Rehab. Um, all of our students have open vocational rehab, rehabilitation uh, cases. So we have an additional employment specialist that will just be on campus to support all Trip Succeed students through the Career Center as well, which is, which is great. That's a, a partnership we have with vocational rehabilitation. Um, next slide. Here is the peer mentoring. I'm just gonna go over a little bit and then I'm gonna turn it over to Amira to talk about her experience. The peer mentors, um, there's a couple of levels. First, they take a three credit course within our disability studies minor program. Um, and as of this spring, actually, it was a disability studies minor uh, program, it is now, it also hits the requirements of two or checks off two general education requirements. So it's been adapted a little bit, which means it opens up to the entire university. So um, typically we've had 15 to 20 mentors in each class um, that stay with us. We have 50, five zero mentors signed up for the spring <laughs> um, because, uh, and pulling from all over. We have a bunch of kinesiology students and psychology students now. Um, so we're very excited that we're broadening it that way as well. We have aligned it with uh, the College Reading and Learning Association uh, so that students can get an international certification as a peer mentor. And then they have the ability to, in the next semester, stay on, take a seminar with us and become lead peer mentors and get a level two certificate, which Amira has done both. So she can talk about that. Uh, there's, so there's the coursework and then there's field work. So they do a lot of planning and reflection. They do lesson plans, they do weekly logs. And then they also provide direct support to the students in the Chirp Succeed program as part of their field work. So I'm just gonna ask Amira, if you wanna talk a little bit about your experience with both of the, the courses, um, and the and the support you provided. Yeah, so like she said, we started in Dr. Lee's class. Um, 
So the level one peer mentor certification is what we were working towards. And that was really great to just kind of learn a lot of like critical thinking skills and different skills like how to effectively ask questions and just generally interact with people with disabilities. Um, and then through that, kind of in conjunction with that, we also did field work at the same time. Um, so then when we came back to class, it was a great opportunity for all the peer mentors to kind of share their experiences and like any strategies they had successes with in like social and academic settings or any challenges. And then we could all brainstorm solutions together. So that was really great as a way to just learn how to interact with people with disabilities by kind of jumping right in. And then we also at the same time got to kind of build a bond between the mentors, which kind of makes the program have a better connection as well. Um, so then after that course, I decided to continue to try and get my level two certification as a lead peer mentor. So that was this past semester, this past fall semester. Um, so I still did some field work and support hours directly, but then I also had weekly meetings um, where with just the peer mentors and our coordinator and we just discussed different topics similar to the level one class but a little bit more in depth with more specific topics that we all ended up presenting on um so each peer mentor kind of got assigned a topic and we presented on it and researched it so mine was establishing boundaries and there were other things about like team building and kind of just like disability in the context of higher education Great, thanks. Um, next slide. So these are the supports that that we are providing in Trip Succeed. So there's individualized goal setting and tracking. Each student does take um, it, an independent study course in the semesters where we follow those individualized goals um, and adapt them and um, and expand them as needed. Uh, we train the RAs on the floors in the dorms where students will be living um, just so they know about the program, they have access to us, they have some strategies uh, as well, um, and they're just like any other student who lives on, their, lives on their floor or lives in their building. We reach out to professors ahead of time um, in all courses that they're going to register for and talk through what our expectations are when they're auditing and uh, and talk through what some of the modifications might be uh, for particular students, and then check in every other week to make sure that you know is there any any extra support that a professor needs, any questions that they have. Um, so we work with them throughout the whole process, uh, and then the whole peer mentor coordination and collaboration to provide the supports because there are there are a lot of moving pieces, uh, you know just with making sure that students understand their assignments get them in on time tests um support within the within the classroom and honestly the the peer mentors help us immensely because we don't you know as faculty i don't really access any of the the online supports or the you know the classes as a student and there's there's a there's whole strategies and there's there's stuff that i wouldn't even understand so even it took us a while to learn how to even register for classes because I don't register for classes, um, but they do. So they sat down and said, no problem, we can work through this. So we learned so much <laughs> from our from our mentors. Um, it's also helpful when students have internships on campus as well because the peer mentors can help support that. Um, and really key is that social and communication piece uh, as well. And we do not provide 24 seven support, but the mentors are there and it's it's been great because we've had students who have activities that go till you know late at night and we have mentors who say that you know that's no problem I, I live here too they're all late night you know young people and so they will help um support when when is really needed um so amira maybe i'm just going to ask you to talk about some of those direct supports that you've provided if you have just any insight into because i know we do tutoring and in-class support and some of the experience you've had with those direct supports? Yeah, so my first semester as a peer mentor, I worked a lot um, outside of class, just on like note taking, study habits, things like that, a lot with Hari. Um, we would kind of find a consistent time that worked for both of us. We would usually meet at the library or 
in another building on campus or even in his dorm and just go through all his assignments that he needed to get done for the day, which he kind of had planned out of what he wants to get done. And I would provide support for note taking, helping to make sure he really understands um, the subject and kind of like asking kind of insightful questions just to reinforce the learning. Um, that's kind of a lot of academic support. And then this semester, I've been going to classes as well with the students. So going to discussion classes, which are kind of like smaller classes that are taught by like the TAs to just um, support the learning that's happening in lecture. Um, so that's kind of just make sure, help them stay on task, help them facilitate engagement with the other students in the discussions, because a lot of discussion times it's you go in small groups and you talk about things and then you present as a bigger group. So just making sure that all the students are being included in that conversation. Um, and then social support. We do a lot of we like everyone likes to go to the, the football games, the basketball games. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. And then I'm just recently they all like to go to the gym. So Hari will get me to go to the gym with him. <laughs> We'll do a workout together. Just any social thing that any college kid would do on campus, we'll just go and do together. He'll text me, how oh, do you want to go to the gym? And it'll just be kind of spontaneous. Great, thanks. Yeah, I, and I do love the spontaneous that happens. Um, so that just that just shows independent growth for for the students, and for me, it also shows you know that there's there's friendships being developed, and um, so. That's all that organic stuff that just happens in a great college community. So I do love that. Um, next slide is just a a visual of, and these guys go, oh my God, the rainbow calendar. Whenever, whenever like, well, who's who's helping you? We're like, check the rainbow calendar. So um, so this is just an indicator. This is a shared document. So the students pick sort of what activities they have their classes in there. If they're having a, you know additional activities that they want to do, they need extra time studying. Um, then it all goes into this calendar, and then you can see that the the support person, you know, a peer mentor signs up so that we have an idea of where where the coverage is. And then sometimes some, like uh, Amir said, some other stuff happens where in in some of that blank time, somebody just wants to go to the gym, and that didn't make the calendar, but that's great. We just want to make sure for some key items for classes for studying that we have coverage and then it's easy to track, um, you know, both the mentors and their field work and make sure the students have the supports where it's really key. So it is a, it's it's constant. And then this also goes into their Google calendars. Hari, he populates his own Google calendar. Sometimes we help other students do that so that throughout the day, it just pops up where they need to go and who they're meeting. So um, that's like a little background. And next slide. I think the next slide, this is for you, Hari. I want you to introduce yourself and just tell them classes and what your experience has been. You've had three full semesters. You're in your final semester getting ready for graduation. So let them know how it's been. Yes, sir. Um, who am I? Um, I'm Murray Cannon. Um, why am I here? I'm my year. Um, um, I'm, 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 um, um, me um, and my friends I've known um now I'm in high school um 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 they told me um that Miller is great place and everything and, and then um, once my mom found out that this program existed um I um 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 it was a good opportunity for me to come to um college and see um, big campus and see the amazing family I made, um, and, um, classes, um, well, um, throughout my semester, I, I, I took field of classes, I took immunal justice class, um, I took, um, a communication class, um, I took, um, nutrition and a community health class and then um last semester i i took some um some of the um, classes um i took um some of the interesting classes and uh, and 
I'm anything, I mean, straight A student in all the class I, I, I took. Um, and the activities, um, um, I think the first two semesters, I, um, I, um, I helped out as a um, men's club soccer team. Um, and speaking of that, I, um, I, I, I got a bad pass um, from them, um, from the men's club soccer team. Um, so, I'm sorry that I have out with, um, I have, I have with, um, setting the goals and getting out the shirts. And then um I go and I do um um fitness classes in the gyms and um and then I do football with some of my friends um and um I sometimes go to camp and I um and I um um do some fun stuff at Tubstone. Um, and in the zone, there's, um, bowling, there's TV, the walls, there's subway, you can, um, eat snacks and walls, um, and dorm living. Um, well, for me, my dorm living has been amazing these past few semesters. Um, I live in a nice, um, dorm called Prince Frederick. It's in South Campus. Um, um, my family and my all my friends, in, in my high school friends, they, they all say that um, it's a hotel. It's a hotel. Um, but for me, I love it. Um, I live in a single room. I have a room all by myself. I have a bathroom all by myself too. Um, so I kind of feel um like a great any better person living in a dorm room um, and dining hall. Um, dining hall is pretty good. I love the food in dining hall on these past few semesters. The food there is amazing. Um, last semester, every Tuesday, I get wrapped. I get wrapped on every Tuesday. Um, so, um, so, um, uh, I love the food, um, but one downside is that I miss m my mom cooking. Um, and get around campus. Um, um, I get around campus pretty well. Um, um, I walk. I walk in my classes in everywhere. I don't get um, buses and everything. Um, walking is good exercise for you. And so I have this Apple Watch on me, and so I can track um, my calories. Now, what it can track my exercise calories. Um, and I'm feeding um, well, my friend on my watch, so that's good. Um, and friends, Latin friends. Um, um, friends. That's not been a problem for me um, these past few semesters. Um, I, I, I've had so many friends um, in Maryland, in College Park, and also on campus. Um, some of my friends have, um, some of my friends are now alumni of UMD, um, but some of them are still on campus. Um, my friends are amazing. I have a group stack of everyone on, on my phone. So that on my phone, in like, um, I should say, um, um, two or three groups. I like, ask yeah, my friends, I text them, and I'm like, hey, sit down, go to them, go to them, go to them, um, dinner sometimes, and yeah. We do that. Um, but overall, my semester has been amazing. Um, I cannot believe um, I'm going to my final semester of college. Um, so other than that, I am like other than that, other than that, I'm like I like 
I am made an awesome family in college. I made an awesome family in colleges. Um, I don't believe um, I made so much of that. So thank you all for making my life easier and thank you to my family I made. Thank you, Hari. Um, yeah, and some of the, in terms of, of career interest, he's really interested in health and fitness and yeah. in advocacy. So you've been able to take, you're taking a, a uh, kinesiology course on how to become a personal trainer, personal fitness trainer this semester, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. You've taken uh, public policy courses and you took the psychology of happiness because this past oh, yeah. semester, which was right about, you know, um, mental health um, and well being, and worked in the health center as one of his internships yep. in health education. Yes. And starting in yeah. working in recreation this time because, oh, yeah. Yeah, practice yeah. Practice, and, right? and, go, and go in the health center, um, I am um, taught the COVID 19 death kit. I taught the COVID 19 death kit in at the health center. And I um, made flyer about stress. At the center, and then and then this coming semester I'm gonna work at a um at a gym that is far from me um um and that's good um I, 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 so I'm so continuing um working in a taking on a studio on Saturday so uh, um so of all those internships I've had. Um, I feel like I'm going to get off soon, but who knows? <laughs> right. And we'll work on, on this is semester we'll work on finding a job. Yeah. That's related to all of that, you know, um, all the coursework you've taken and all the experience that you've had. So, um, so that's very exciting. And he'll be graduating with the College of Education in the regular ceremony with every College of Ed graduate. So we're very excited for that. Um, Okay, next slide. This is just the final sort of um, what is the admissions process. So it opened in December, the application. It closes February 1st. We make our decisions by April 1st because all um, housing submissions must be submitted to the university by um, May 1st. All of our application materials are open on our website currently. The uh, what does it cost? It's the typical University of Maryland tuition, room board, and fees. Um, the program fee, there's an additional program fee uh, for that helps with, you know, managing all the peer supports and, and extra support that we provide. It's $3,750 per semester. Um, there is also a scholarship application in there. We do give some scholarships. Uh, and like I said, we're going to get that status of comprehensive transition program. So financial aid is an option. Students with current vocational rehabilitation cases with Maryland doors may be eligible for them to pay for a bulk of the tuition at the community college rate. We have piloted that. And as soon as we get that CTP um, approval, they will do that for all students that they uh, with open VR cases. So that helps with the with the tuition um, as well. So um, I think from there, it's just, we have a couple of slides just of pictures so you can see the inclusion working um, on campus, there's one of the tweets from Dr. Pines. Um, and these were with Zach and Hari, which was our first year students. And on the next slide, um, we have incorporated the additional students. So we have six students on campus now. So here's just, and there again is President Pines with a couple of our students, students outside one of their dorms, just at events and activities. Yeah. So um, we can, I okay. guess, take any questions. Yes. Um, Dendi, do we have any questions, please? We have quite a few questions, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so Great. there's a few that I can kind of group together that were asked uh, whether a student needs to have a high school diploma or have graduated on a diploma track in order to be able to attend the program. No, absolutely not. Um, the bulk of our students have a certificate of completion from MSDE. You can also have a diploma, but that does not, yeah, exclude you in any way. That is actually the kind of the purpose of the of the program. If the student has a certificate, that's that's great. 
Okay, and I have another question asking about direct support. Uh, do they have any supports to ensure they wake up on time, go to class as scheduled, um, or are they, do they need to be independent in navigating all of those requirements? Well, we start out assessing what each student's support needs are. The, the, um, it's, it's important that at some point they will be able to get up on their own because we don't have people who like, you know, live in the dorms with them by any means. Students have accessed uh, their students who, who um, are DDA eligible and have, say, the self-directed waiver. Ari is their a family that has that. They hired um, an individual to work a, more specifically on some independent living skills. Actually, he ended up becoming more of an academic tutor, right, Hari? Because Hari had the independent living stuff down. Um, yeah, that's a couple I of did. other that's students, yeah. yeah, as well. And they hire students on campus, grad students or, or students. We, you know, we put a, a call out, um, and so sometimes they pay for additional supports through their waivers if if that's needed. Okay, fantastic. Um, we had several questions about the courses that they're able to take, what subjects they're able to study, um, and, and whether they have any choice in choosing those courses. Oh, absolutely. We go through a whole process, right, Harry, of looking at what is available. Um, to start out, we look at those courses that can be audited. Not all are auditable. Um, and actually, Hari, your personal fitness course coming up is not. You're taking that for a regular grade, but Hari has proven he's been here. He's a senior, um, and and he is. I've gotten emails from instructors that classes he's audited and said, you know, he would have gotten a lovely grade. You know, so um, but other than that, it's some. There are some courses. Not everybody can take any course because if if you're not in that major, sometimes you have to be in a sort of kinesiology major to take certain courses. So you know, Amira couldn't take them either. So there are those restrictions as well. Um, some have some prerequisites, and there are a few that need special permission to be outside. So we have a student who takes a lot of theater courses, and we just go to the head of the theater department, and he grants permission for Zach to audit those courses. So sometimes there's a way for me to reach out and get permissions passed. But we look at, you look at your interest area, and I mean, there are thousands of classes. And so we just, you know, we have lists of them and then it's a whole registration process. And we play a lot of the um, drop ad in the waitlist game. Don't we hurry? He's become a pro going on waitlist, watch until he comes off. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. And, and, well, I, I'm second on the way this, so I'm so you know might get off sooner. Right, right. And usually when you're second on the wait list, you get into the class. So we have learned yeah. all those tricks. Um, but we go through the, you know, there's a, anybody can look at the Testudo schedule of classes. It's at Testudo, if you Google that at University of Maryland. Yeah. And you can see <laughs> in every class all of the classes that are available. And we just choose from all those general general ed courses. I'm going okay. to interject. Um, Dendi, excuse me. We can take one more question and then um, we, we need to do the two polls and then we'll close this out. So go ahead, please. Oh gosh, how to narrow down all of these questions to just I... one. <laughs> so when you mention clubs, does this include the ability to uh, try out for the sports programs in like the division one or division two club? Um, Sure, absolutely. If, if someone has the skills, those are pretty competitive clubs, the, the D1, D2. There is also a general rec club, which one of our students plays soccer um, in that program. So there's all levels. But yeah, anything that anybody is, you know, any student can access, they can try out for as well. Um, most of them are not try out, it's just join. Um, but the, the sports ones, if they're at that D1, D2, D3 level of, of club activity, they would have to try out, but certainly can. Terrific. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. I'd like to, um, Caroline, invite you to let's complete our last two polls. And while we're doing that, um, I just want to thank you, Amy, Hari, and Amira. This was fantastic. I, I am completely heartened by all that you're doing um, and so excited for you, Hari, and all that you're learning, the experiences you're having as, as for you too, Amira. And I just think it bodes well for all of us. So 
thanks for being here today and taking the time to share your experiences with us. And Amy, thank you for the good work that you're doing. So we have our fourth poll, which is, were you satisfied with this webinar? The options are not satisfied, set aside, and greatly satisfied. So it looks like we have a lot of people who have voted so far, so we'll go ahead and close that poll. Also, so the results yeah. were was that nobody was not satisfied with it, 30% were satisfied, and 70% were greatly satisfied. We're going to ask our last poll. So our last poll for today is, depending on the topic, will you attend future webinars? And the options are yes, no, and maybe. And, and while you're completing the poll, I, I just want to remind folks that you have a copy of this PowerPoint in the handout section. And you have in that, of course, you have Amy's contact information. So if I know there were many questions we couldn't get to today, but please feel free to reach out to her. Right, Amy? That's fine. Absolutely. Please send me any questions that, that you have that we didn't get to today. And, um, and I'll respond to you. Okay. The results of our last poll are 95% of people said yes and 5% said maybe. So I will turn it over to Marianne to close us out. Okay, terrific. And can you um, go to the next slide, please? Next slide. One more. There we go. Um, and one more. That's my contact information, but one more. So I just want to thank again all of our presenters. You were fantastic. Um, I also want to thank Deputy Secretary Simons for making this possible. And with that, Please stay tuned for our folks who would like to attend these webinars. We'll be announcing our next webinar, hopefully a series, maybe six months out of um, webinars to come. With that, have a great day and take care. Mm -hmm.